things were so good in the beginning, weren't they? Wasn't it really great when we first got together? I remember when we first got together and I thought this was just gonna be like the best relationship ever. We've had some really good times, but I think it's time to just go our separate ways. I mean, it's not really you, it's, it's me, or maybe it is mostly you. I think we just need to be adults and mature and responsible and just step away because we know it's not working. I mean, I'm not gonna say it could never happen again down the road, but for now, I just need to make a clean break and um, let go. Hey friends, it's Quenby, the Grateful Queen here on YouTube. Welcome back for another video. Today we are talking about how I am breaking up with ThreadUp. That's right, I've been selling on ThreadUp for over a year. I've had some highs and some lows, and because of a, rec a few recent changes ThreadUp has made, I've decided it is time to break up. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here and you found us. We have a great community of online resellers and people who love thrift shopping here on the channel. I make videos about thrift hauls, thrift with me's, unboxings, thread up videos, all sorts of great stuff. And I'd love to have you join us. So please be sure you are subscribed. I've been reselling part-time for over 10 years. I started on eBay. And then I moved to Poshmark. I've also sold on ThreadUp, on Etsy, on whatnot. So I sell in all the places. I'm also a psychotherapist and I have another channel called The Grateful Therapist. If you wanna come over there, we can talk about mental health. So I have a couple of videos up on my channel about selling to ThreadUp. I have videos on how to pack up a box and get the most out of your clean out kit. And then I have videos on what I've learned selling on ThreadUp things that sell really well over there, certain brands, for example, like Theory, that I have a very hard time moving for good profit on eBay myself, but ThreadUp prices it really high, and so your payout can be really great. So I have kind of the tips and tricks of ThreadUp. I'm really glad that in those videos, I made sure to say things like, ThreadUp is not there for resellers. They are not designed as a platform for resellers. They often make changes. You have to be able to roll with it. It's sort of like the Wild West over on ThreadUp and don't sell on there if you can't handle it. I'm really glad I sold those, said those things. <laughs> now, if you love ThreadUp and it's, and it's working for you over there, that's fantastic. Um, I do wanna make sure you're aware of a, one really big change, which is kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. Is that what people say? A big recent change that ThreadUp has made to their selling platform has made me realize it's not gonna work for me to sell over there. I wanna make sure you know about it in case you're currently selling on ThreadUp or you're considering th learning ThreadUp and selling over there. I wanna make sure you know what's going on. So the way ThreadUp works is I pack up a big 30 pound box of items that I wanna consign with ThreadUp. ThreadUp gets my box and they go through and they say, great, these are the things that we're going to take, Quimby, Let's list them on our site for sale. And I can go on there and adjust prices and things. So if they've got a price way too low, I can bump it up a little bit. And anything they don't take, they send back to me. There is a little bit of monitoring my kits that I have to do, but for the most part, it's pretty passive income. I send my stuff off to them. They are the ones who photograph it, steam it if they have to, list it, ship it off, deal with any returns. So it's been a great source of passive income. I don't make as much per item because I'm not doing any of the work, they are. So that has really worked for me. What is now currently not working is a, an example I'm gonna share with you now. So if you've ever been on ThreadUp, you know they're always running crazy sales. 20% off, 30% off, use this coupon code for 40% off. But they always had a rule that said, hey, we're thread up, we're the ones running the sale, we're not gonna take it out of your profits, that wouldn't be right. The most we're gonna take out of Quimby is 20%. So if thread up is running a 40% off sale, they're only gonna take out 20% and never more than 20%, even if they're doing a much bigger sale. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Well, I have this item here. And this is a gorgeous top. Good one for you guys to know because it's kind of a bolo. Should I put it up on the screen or is this easier? I think I'll just do it this way, why not? 
So this is a gorgeous top that I had up for sale. It was Nuid Tags with a $250 price tag on it. The brand is TRYB. I'm not super familiar with that brand or anything, but that's what was on the tag. Gorgeous boho, um, bell sleeve. It had like everything going for it. Well, I had it priced um, at $63.99 and my payout on that brand because it was such a good brand is a 38% payout. That's really high because sometimes um, you don't make that much of a percentage. Well, um, I went to go look at my payouts and it said the price of the top was $24.96. And my payout on $24.96 is only $9 and change. And I'm thinking, why on earth would they sell this top for $24.96? And then when you look at it here, it says this item was purchased with a 61% off promo code after it had been listed for seven days. So your payout was reduced accordingly. Now, <laughs> I was like, somebody used a 60% off promo code that ThreadUp was offering. I wasn't offering that, ThreadUp was. And they took 60% off of my item. Now in the past, like I said, they would max that cap it out at 20%. So if ThreadUp wants to run these crazy sales, that's fine, but they're only gonna take 20% off for me. Now it's 60% off they can use, and that's gonna be my payout, so I message them. Now, here's another thing about ThreadUp that drives me crazy. Their customer service, it, it, it can take like four, six days for them to get back to you. So I wrote and said, hey, I think there might have been a mistake. And it wasn't just item. Th this item, I have several more examples I could show you where out of that same kit, people were using a 60% off code and I was getting docked that. So I wrote to them and said, hey, what's up? It used to only be 20% max. And she basically said, ThreadUp has the right to change their payouts at any time without notice to you. They sent me this lovely little highlighted email she sent me with the red and highlight like Quemby, take a look at this. Payouts may be adjusted accordingly if your item is purchased using a discount offer. Payout calculations may be subject to change from time to time without notice. <laughs> so if you've got your items there, so if I've got my items there and I've got them priced in a way that I feel comfortable with knowing somebody could use a, use a coupon and I might make 20% less, but they're basically saying, we're gonna sell it for whatever we want. You know, ThreadUp's a business. They have to do what they're gonna do. I have a choice whether to sell on there or not. So do you. But I'd like to make the choices knowing kind of what the rules are. And this just says, we have no rules. <laughs> Someone can spend 60% off and that's gonna come out of your payout. I just don't think that's right. Oh, I've decided that doesn't work for me anymore. And I'm breaking up with ThreadUp. Now, <laughs> as you might know, it's not that simple because they have many of my boxes sitting there waiting to be processed. Many of you have asked me, how do you get labels right now? I know they're not giving out labels. I had some old labels back from the day where they would let you print 10 at a time. But I have a couple of boxes just sitting there. So I, I can't, you can't get those boxes back. I have to wait for those to go through the whole cycle of being listed on their site, seeing what sells, reclaiming what doesn't sell. So I'm kind of stuck for a little while, but I will not be sending in more boxes to thread up. I'll leave a little like this as my caveat hands. <laughs> caveat I'll speak to a little bit later in the video. I have been warned um, as I've tried to forewarn you that thread up is a little bit crazy. They do what they want. It's a risk to sell over there, but I'm at the part where I'm like slowly backing away. I can't totally get out of the relationship because they still have my stuff. So that's tough. The only thing I was thinking that I might ever send a thread up is if I pack boxes of stuff I do not care about whatsoever. Say it's stuff that I get in mystery boxes. I'm talking like your Ann Taylor loft size, extra small, black career skirt. You know, if it's something I'd either donate or try, or maybe send a thread up to try to get a dollar or two for, that's the only thing in the future I'll be sending to thread up. Stuff that I don't care about whatsoever if I never see it again. And if I can make a few bucks, maybe towards a mystery reseller, mystery rescue box, but other than that, I'm not doing it. Now, I have never done partner kits. Partner kits are where you pack up a kit, you send it off to them, and they buy it out immediately what they want from you. They buy it, and then you can earn a gift card. So it's not cash. You could do like an Athleta 
partner kit, a reformation partner kit. I've never done that. So I don't know how my issues that I'm having with ThreadUp would pertain to partner kits. Some people seem to really like those. So you do you, I'm just sharing my experience here. If ThreadUp works for you, that's fantastic. Check your payouts and make sure that it's not happening to you what's happening to me, which is, I mean, you're getting like pennies for your stuff because of these crazy promo codes they're letting people shop with, which is fantastic for them, but not for me. So. <laughs> I have a so we are in my inventory storage area, AKA my garage, super glamorous, but it works. And I have here a box from ThreadUp. Gosh, I wish this was a ThreadUp rescue box. I've not been able to get a rescue box in a while, you guys. They just haven't even had the rescue boxes for sale. So I don't know what's going on up there. These are things that I sent into ThreadUp and they accepted them, said, sure, Quimby. I have this paper all over the house <laughs> from, for every time they send stuff back. So this is stuff that um, they accepted on their site to sell for me, but it didn't sell in their time period. So I had to reclaim it. They've sent it back. This is gorgeous. This is a Michael Kors handbag and handbags do really well. And handba handbags have been a final sale. I think of this as more as a, of a summer bag though, because it's um, canvas red and white. It looks sort of nautical. Now I'm not going to send this back to thread up. Usually I'd get these reclaims and I just turn around and send them right back to thread up again and say, Hey, you accepted, you accepted them once they just didn't sell, but I'm not doing that anymore friends because I don't want someone to buy that Michael Kors handbag with a 61% off promo code and have me get nothing. This is J. Crew, and it's the black label, so that's like a better line. And this is so cute. It's an extra small. That's probably why I sent it there. But it's like a heavy knit striped jersey dress. Whenever I list these, I put nautical in the title. Classic, classic uh, item there. Now, I could. My, my thinking now is I'm only going to send things to thread up that I never want to see again. I don't care if I make any money on. And even then, I don't even know if I want to do it. <laughs> But that's a possibility. Now I have to list list this. Here's a loft, Ann Taylor loft, size extra small. This is the sort of stuff I used to love to send into them. Just a lace top. I don't really want to list that, but I'm gonna have to. It's so sad, thread up. Oh, this is pale sky. Never even heard of pale sky. Sometimes I get this stuff back and I'm like, where did this come from? I don't even remember it. This is super cute, black tank, and it's all lace and crochet in the back. This is the sort of stuff I love to send to thread up because it's an extra small tank. For me to take the time to list that, build a listing, photograph it, what am I gonna make? 10 bucks or something? I'd rather send it to thread up and have them do all the work and the listing and the shipping and make a dollar or two. This is a Talbot skirt, 100% wool size 12, like a career skirt, I'll list that because it's a size 12 and it's wool. I used to send thread up all my wool because they priced it high. Um, they used to, they price silk high, wool high, so it was worth it, but no more. This is BCBG Max Azria size, one size, that can't be right. I don't know what that says, small or extra small. This is a dry cleaning tag. BCBG Max Azria is one of these brands that I just have a very hard time selling. Do you sell it? Um, but ThreadUp sells it really well. And this is like a color block sheath dress. So it's nice. This could be a career dress. It has this sexy cutout in the chest. It's a sheath if it is just a form fitting dress that comes down to like your knees or below your knees. Then it is a sheath dress. People mess those up all the time on eBay. I notice in their titles, I'm like, that's not a sheath. There's a shift and a sheath. A sheath is fitted like your classic career dress. A shift is just a throw over lightweight flowy thing. This is the brand Z Lucy size medium. Lucy is sold at Nordstrom, places like that. I think the quality is really good, but the resale on it has not been great. And this is just a tank, but I still will list that by myself. I'd rather do that than send it to thread up right now. This, I hate selling career skirts. This is a women's, doesn't even have a brand on it, size six, polyester and silk. 
Um, cute little career skirt. See, I just don't like selling these. They don't sell well for me. And this has no brand. Threadup will take it if it has no brand. They will not take it if it has no size. So what am I gonna do with that? Probably donate it because that would be very hard for me to sell. This top is really cute. It is uh, loft again, which I do not have any luck with. Loft size medium, kind of a silky peasant blouse, but I love this pop of like lime green chartreuse color. That's really cute, I'll sell it. I wish I had a good buy sell trade store. Do you guys have one by you? I have Plato's Closet and I have a couple of videos I'm trying to sell to them and they don't take my stuff. I try to send like the trendy, young, uh, teenage, young adult stuff, but they, they don't buy my stuff. But I know a lot of you have had good luck with buy sell trades. Another career skirt by United Colors of Benetton, a brown straight career skirt. I might just donate it because that brand was hot in the 90s when I was growing up. We had a United Colors of Benetton in my town and oh it was so expensive and I wanted stuff from there so badly. This is a cute dress by RD Style. Is that a Nordstrom Rack brand you guys? RD Style. This is cute though. A black long sleeve dress with tears and ruffles. I mean, that's a perfectly cute dress. I'll sell it. So I have several boxes like this that they've sent back to me that I now have to go through and not send a thread up anymore, but sell it myself. Wah, wah, wah. Some of this stuff is not worth my time, is it? I'm so sad. I'm so sad about the thread up relationship. I have to grieve. I have to grieve the end of the relationship, clearly. Okay, I ended up with a few more sold, so why not tell you about them? These these are a pair of Talbot's women's jeans. They were in a plus size 16. And I tried to sell those on Whatnot in two shows for like $3, $5. And no one bought them. And I listed them and they sold right away. These are a pair of Who, What, Wear uh, flannel wide leg pants. They were so cool. And this is that pair of Athleta leggings that I showed in my last video I bought on Whatnot. I bought them for eight bucks and they sold for 30 bucks right away. I'll show you my little Christmas display since we're out here. You guys know I love my vintage thrifted stuff. Kind of hard with this tripod. Let me show you this little basket I got. I'm the worst filmer ever. Is that better? I got this little basket with my mom. It's a vintage wicker basket that someone had put wheels and a little pulley on. So I put some greens in it and one of my faux vintage Santas. Oh, my little bow fell off. I got this um, antique wooden chair uh, for $5 at a church thrift store. And I had a pumpkin on it earlier. Now I've got Christmas stuff. So happy holidays over here. And I'm filming this mid-December 2022. We got our Christmas tree up. Kind of wanted to show you guys at night, but then it's hard to see. Torvald said, my 11-year-old son Torvald said, just get a bushy tree, Mom. Okay, I'll get a bushy tree, Torvald. <laughs> it's definitely bushy. Thought I'd show you real quick while I have you a couple uh, thrift store pickups. I ran in quickly to get some ornaments for my family holiday boxes that I send out. And I took a quick look at this is a gorgeous plate. It's hand painted and it's made in Italy. Made in Italy is fantastic if you want to resell. I can't read what the rest of that says, but you can tell it's hand painted. It's even a little misshapen. This would be a great resale item. I'll probably keep this just for personal use. She only charged me $2 because it didn't have a price tag on it and plates are $2. So I was like, oh yes. I think I already showed you this guys. You watched me buy this for $5. It's a heavy wrought iron um, picture or plate display. And then this little painting PD found for me at the Goodwill outlet bins. Looks vintage to me. It's painted by Shelly. So I added that there. And then these, I collect these sorts of things. 
Um, I think these are probably from the 50s. That's when this was really popular, where people made this kind of jeweled fruit. These are grapes. It's all beaded. A whole bag of them, and it was only $3. So that was a fantastic score. Some of them have ribbons on them. Like this. Oh my god, isn't that so pretty? So I'll arrange these all on a pretty little plate. A couple cute pickups, right? All right, I'm on my way to pick up Torvald to school. I just have a few things to ship out, so I thought I'd share those with you. This is a Vince sweater, V-I-N-C-E. Really good, good brand. It used to sell a lot better, I think, than it does. Now, I took kind of a lower offer on these, this sweater just to kind of get sales going over the weekend. I already shipped out my weekend sales. This is a Harry Potter book in German. <laughs> you guys, I have been listing the most random stuff, and here's why. Quarter four is usually like talked about as the best sales season for most resellers, and I think it is, depending on what you sell, not always true for clothing resellers. I have noticed I've been selling more of my new with tags clothing items, and I've been kind of reaching and listing some different stuff. I've had boxes of books sitting around that were like my son's books, um, stuff I'd read and wasn't gonna reread again, so I've just actually been scanning them and seeing if any of them have any value. This one sold for $15, plus um, I did calculated shipping media mail, so they only had to pay $3.49, but just a book sitting around. A lot of the books weren't worth listing at all, in my opinion, but some were, and so I listed those. I've also been listing toys, Certain toys that like um, I got for my son, some Legos and things that he wasn't really into were new in the box or excellent condition. Like these um, are a pair of those Heelys. And those, these are those sneakers that have a little wheel on the bottoms, like skate on them. And he wore them just a couple of times. I saved the box and everything. They look practically like new. So these sold, um, and I, it was for $24.95 plus $13.49 shipping. So those are going out. I was, what was in this package? I can't remember what's in this package. This is a mystery package going to somebody. <laughs> Whatever's in this package, I'll put a picture of up on the screen to show you that I sold it. A lot of people are saying sales are super slow. My Poshmark sales are so crazy slow. It's like, and a lot of people think it's because of Posh Lives. There's so many Posh Lives happening and people are shopping on there. My Posh sales have never been crazy good, but they're very slow. And I always contemplate, should I even keep selling on Posh? Or should I just like focus on eBay? But then I'll have like a $50 sale. That's what keeps happening for me on Posh, where I don't have as many sales, but I feel like I have more of like my $40, $50 and above sales on Poshmark. So I sold a pair of Lululemon pants um, on Poshmark and that was $50. And I'm like, oh, it's worth it. Even if I make a few of those a month, um, then it seems worth it. So how are your sales? Seriously, why is it whenever I decide to film a video, one of my neighbors decides now is the perfect time to blow all my leaves with that big leaf blower. So I do have some monitoring of kits I have to do where I see if something sold, if it didn't sold. Mm, this is getting like, not labor intensive, but there's a lot of words. Why is he doing the leaf blowing at this exact second? How long does it take to blow your leaves? Okay, let me get. <coughs> BCBG Max Azria, I can't really sell to sell. I can't sell to sell? No, what am I trying to say? I was kind of hoping they were gonna be like, you know, a birthday present. I'm mean, not a birthday, it's Christmas. So, ooh, what the heck happened there? Jeez. One, quarter four is historically like the best, um, 
be helpful if you could say some words right now. So you can like slide and slip? No, rock and roll? No. What can you do with them?